Hello lovely people, welcome back to another video. How are you all doing? I have not done a video like this for a hot minute. This is kind of a recommendations video, it's kind of a haul, it's kind of a shelf tour. It's a, an amalgamation of all three of those things, but it's been a long time since I have sat down and done a recommendation style video. So this is going to be talking you through my dark academia shelf, which is this shelf here. I've attempted to get both the shelf and me in frame and have come up with this weird angle that I'm not really a big fan of, but here we are. So I'm going to be talking you through all the books on my dark academia shelf. Some I have read, some I have not, some I have multiple and then some editions of <laughs> Babel. And yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to go through this shelf and talk you through all the books on my dark academia shelf. I put together this shelf quite recently and I'm very aware that not all of these books might be wi widely classed as dark academia books but I, I've got them on the shelf anyway. There's a couple that I'm a bit squiffy about whether they sit into the genre or not, but we're gonna include them in the video. I really associate Dark Academia with September time because obviously we have the back to school season, we have university term starting. It's just everything these books are about. So for me, I always feel like this time of year is the perfect time of year to read Dark Academia books. Now I've tried to look up a definition of Dark Academia just in case anyone's watching this wondering what dark academia actually is because it's been a term that's been floated about quite a lot recently especially within the book community but there might be people out there that aren't 100 percent sure on what that consists of there's kind of different types of definitions a lot of them go more towards like dark academia as an aesthetic than as a book genre so the aesthetic definitions this one's from wikipedia so I mean, it's not the best resource, but it says Dark Academia is a social media aesthetic and subculture concerned with higher education, writing slash poetry, the arts and classic Greek and Gothic architecture. The subculture is associated with an ancient art and classic literature. So it does kind of touch on the book side of things. But then further down, I found the definition under what does dark academia books mean? And this says categorized as dark academia, these books are moody and mysterious narratives that usually take place within the confines of an esteemed university or boarding school. Think darkened libraries, cloak and dagger campus societies, looming gothic towers and college, college quads buzzing with intrigue. And I feel like that's a fairly decent definition. That's from a website called caledonbooks.com. That is what I see dark academia as. It's this moody, dark atmosphere. There's usually quite a tight-knit group of friends. There's usually a specialist area of, of subject that they're studying. There's usually something quite dark and detrimental that happens within that friendship group as well that kind of knits them closer together through not necessarily the most positive turn of events. So that's what I see Dark Academia as linked with that description as well. So without further ado, let's get into this shelf tour. So there isn't like much of an order once I'm actually on the shelves other than hardbacks and paperbacks. So I guess we will start with the paperbacks. So the first one is one that I don't necessarily think of as Dark Academia when reading the blurb. However, the reason I've put it on this shelf and in this video is because I have seen it mentioned in Dark Academia videos. And I think maybe it's one of those ones where once I actually read it, that would become more clear for me. I haven't, as I said, read all of these, so this is one of the ones I haven't read yet but would like to very soon, and this is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atessa Moshfeg. I'm gonna use the blurb to help me tell you what this is about, otherwise we will be here for quite a while. This follows a Columbia graduate, which I think is one of the reasons when I look at this I'm, I'm not sure whether it is within the dark academia genre or not, because obviously it's following a graduate, not somebody that is actually a student. However, again, I haven't read it, so I don't know fully. So this follows a Columbia graduate who has just moved to Manhattan in an apartment that's been paid for by her inheritance. So there's definitely an element of privilege and the advantages of life that a narrator has. But this goes on to say that there is a vacuum at the heart of things and it isn't just the loss of her parents or the way her Wall Street boyfriend treats her or her sadomasochist relationship with her best friend. It's the year 2000 in the world's greatest city, a glitter with wealth and possibility. What could be so terribly wrong? I really would like to read this one and unpick it a little bit more. I've seen very interesting reviews of this. It doesn't scream Dark Academia based on the blurb, but as I said, I have seen it in various recommendations videos, so I think I would definitely have to read it to know, but this is the first one on my Dark Academia shelf. Then, of course, it wouldn't be a Dark Academia video if I didn't include The Secret History by Donna Tartt. 
this is a fantastic staple of this genre. It's a book that I think a lot of people would recognise within the dark academia genre. It follows a group of students who study classics at a university in New England and they get a little bit carried away with some things at the college and things start taking a very twisted and dark turn. This is incredibly powerfully written. It's a real journey of a book. I read it in 2018 and the imagery from it and the characters still really stay quite firm in my head so I think that shows it's definitely a very strong book. Obviously it's had so many glowing reviews. If you haven't read this one and feel like it's one that you're more daunted by because I think if I hadn't read it now I would be daunted by it. It's definitely heavier and it definitely has some quite intense themes. All of these books do. If any of these books sound appealing to you I would definitely recommend checking out trigger warnings for them because obviously with the dark academia genre comes a lot of dark themes. This book included but it's such a fantastically written book with such morally grey characters that have such dark paths and such dark journeys mixed with the studies of their classics classes and their professor and it's incredibly interesting and I loved this one. It's It'd just be wrong not to put this in a recommendations for Dark Academia. Then I have two copies of this next one. This is If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. So I have, I think, wait, what special edition is this one? I think I got this one from Toppings. I was going to say it's a Waterstone special edition, but no, it's, it's a Toppings signed edition that I have. I don't know if this is just like an indie bookseller one. I can't remember, but it's got spray pages. It's a hardback. I think this is one of my favourite books. So I had to have multiple multiple copies of this. This is the paperback I first initially read. I actually think that I pinched this one off of my mum who had read it and enjoyed it and recommended it to me. So I, yeah, I have two copies of this one. This is so good. If you like The Secret History, you will like this book. It is so brilliant. Where the students in The Secret History are studying classics, the students in If We Were Villains are studying drama and acting. This follows a group of students who we see at the start there is somebody that has been imprisoned for a crime that they didn't commit. And we go back to the start of their story and follow where this story went, where it all went wrong, what happened. And it's really interesting because obviously you're getting the story knowing where one of the characters ends up and that is a very interesting perspective to read from. It gives you all of this information in the blurb as well which is a really interesting way of moving the story along because you are reading knowing what's going to happen but not knowing what's going to happen and I think that's really fascinating. Also loved reading about these characters, they're just very again morally grey, that's a lot of the themes within these books, they're morally grey characters and that is my favourite type of characters to read about when we can see the characters have flaws. So very morally grey characters but also very interesting characters to read about in terms of like the acting that they do and the roles they portray as characters in the plays they play versus who we see them as outside of those roles and I think the contrast there are really clever too. It's again very visual, it has a fantastic atmosphere to it. I, I think that this one I preferred the atmosphere in this one than I did in The Secret History, both fantastic atmospheres, but this just felt like it had that really beautiful architecture, that gothic way about it, and that kind of dark and mysterious setting to it as well, which was really, really interesting reading experience. So two copies of this one on my Dark Academia shelf. Next up we have Black Chalk by Christopher J. Yates. This is one that every time I read the blurb of I am desperate to read it so no doubt I'm going to feel like that again now after telling you about it but this sounds really interesting, really gripping and everything that I want in this kind of a book. It sounds like it kind of verges on thriller but I think it is also within the dark academia genre. The tagline at the top of blurb says it was only ever meant to be a game and then on the front it says one game, six students, five survivors so you just know it's going to be a kind of fast-paced action-packed journey. This follows six best friends who are in their first year at Oxford playing a game of forfeits. The game however is changed, the stakes grow higher, the dares more humiliating and the results tragic. Now 14 years later the remaining players must meet again for one final round. The reviews on the back of this call it sinister, addictive and unpredictable. It grabs from the get-go, Yates plots with tantalising skill. I think this sounds like it's going to be very fun, very action-packed. I'm really looking forward to when I do actually read this one. I'm hoping maybe as we get into the latter part of the year with the darker evenings and the kind of atmosphere that would be perfect for this I will pick this one up. 
Next up we have The Truants by Kate Weinberg. This is one, again, every time I read the blurb, I really want to read this one, so I don't know why I haven't read it yet. This follows Jess Walker, who is drawn into a new group of friends in her first year at university, and she begins experimenting with a new version of herself. But the dynamic between the friends and their maverick professor begins to darken as they share secrets, lovers, and finally a tragedy. Soon Jess is faced with the question she fears most, what is the true cost of an extraordinary life? The reviews for this one say as much of a com as much a coming of age tale as a murder mystery. An impressive debut. It's intelligent, fresh, unforgettable, deft, striking, ingenious. I really enjoy reading the, the blurbs on the back of, of these books for reviews because I just think they give you a good insight as to what kind of a book you're expecting. Like sometimes a book looks like it's going to be really fast paced and ends up being slow. Sometimes it looks like it's going to be more thrillery and ends up being more literary. So I think that the reviews kind of give a good gauge what to expect but this is again not one I've read yet as I said but one I would really really like to read soon. I apologise for a lot of the ones I haven't read I am just reading the blurb out to you essentially or rewording the blurb. I think one of the reasons I haven't filmed many videos like this, one it really hurts my back to sit like this so I probably should have just got a chair, two I find that I just really struggle with summarising blurbs and remembering enough detail to regurgitate it in my own words. So I find it a lot easier to be able to read parts of the blurb out as I talk about the book, so hopefully this is an okay format. The final book of the paperbacks is Vita Nostra. This is by Marina and Sergei Diachenko. I hope I pronounced that one correctly. This is a fantasy dark academia, I think? This follows our main character who is doing some tasks for somebody against her family's wishes to gain these shining golden coins. She collects enough of these golden coins to travel to a remote village and use them to gain entrance into the Institute of Special Technologies and thus the Dark Academia side of this begins. It says that Sasha quickly discovers this is no ordinary school, the books are impossible to read, the lessons obscure to the point of maddening, and the knowledge itself refuses to be remembered. Despite this, Sasha undergoes changes that defy matter and time with experiences that are nothing like what she could have dreamed of before, but which are suddenly all that she could ever want. But this learning comes at a cost. The school uses terror and coercion to keep students in line. Should they transgress at all, their families pay a terrible price. This sounds incredibly dark. One of the taglines at the bottom says it's a complex build of adventure, magic, science and philosophy. It's by a distinctly Russian voice. This astonishing story will transport the reader to a place far beyond imagining. I think it sounds very interesting, as I said, very dark. I like the fact that it has the fantasy element and magic element in there too, so I'm intrigued to see where this one goes. Again, this is one I haven't read yet, but this is the final paperback of my shelf. Okay, on to the hardbacks now. I'm gonna rejig this angle a little bit so you can try and get a better view of them. It's a really hard angle to do because it's not like head height or is a bit above. Anyway, I'm gonna rejig. I like the way I said I was gonna change up the angle so you could see the shelf better. I don't think you could see that any better, but Hey, here's my hardbacks, let's go through them. Okay, we already looked at If We Were Villains, which is that one there. So next along in the line is Tiapolo Blue by James Carhill. This is one that I got very recently and I'm very, very, very excited to read. I think this is one of the top ones on the shelf that I really wanna be able to get to soon. I really, really like the end pages for this. The whole book is just visually very, very beautiful and the story sounds really, really great too. This is set in the mid 90s and follows a professor who is a revered art historian at the very height of his career. He is currently writing a book about the skies of the Venetian master Tiepolo. So his immersion in the art world and in academia has left him with an inexperience for life and love. One day a piece of contemporary art is installed on the lawn of his college. Don becomes obsessed with it, his anger eventually erupting in a public blunder that results in his expulsion from Cambridge. He moves to London to take up a role at a museum. There he befriends Ben, a young artist who draws him into the anarchic 90s British art scene and the nightlife of Soho. Over the course of the long hot summer of 95, Hey, I was born in that long hot summer. Don glimpses a liberating new existence, but his epiphany is also a moment of reckoning as his oldest friendship, as well as his own unexamined past, is revealed to him in a devastating new light. This sounds so interesting. I love the fact that we have the crossover of the settings. I love that this is immersed in the art world as well, when we get to see different types of art in this. I think this sounds like a very interesting character to follow as well. I think this is gonna be the kind of book that really defines him as a character and we really see him go on a journey. I've heard really, really good things about this one. It's quite a new release, so I'm really, really excited to get to this one. I would like to try and get this 
on a TBR soon. I did kind of want to try and get it on for my September TBR, but I, I didn't because I got lots of other very chunky books on that TBR instead. But I do really want to read this one very, very soon. Next up is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This is a chunky, chunky book. I loved this. This goes between the past and the present in the storyline. It follows in the past a school that was, I think the school was shut down if I remember rightly. Yes, so there are three or four deaths at school due to a wasp attack here and the school is forced to shut down and it then follows some people in the modern day, in the current day for this timeline, that are making a film about this school and about the story. And the past and present blur together a little bit. Now this one I am not like 100% set again if this is in the dark academia genre because it has the school setting, it has the dark aspects, but it doesn't have other aspects of dark academia. I'm going to include it in this video because I think it ticks enough of the boxes. It has a kind of a clique and a group within it in which people are working within a niche I suppose. It's got this mysterious gothic aspect to it and it definitely has a lot of the traits of like the, the dark themes surrounding it and the way the story goes. Obviously it has the school setting but I, I don't know it's it's not quite there. It's definitely got the gothic stuff which I think sways it over for me a little bit and obviously merged with the school setting but I don't know. I don't know fully whether it fits in the genre or not. Let me know what you think with this one if you've read this but I love this. It was so good. If you haven't read it even if it's not classed within the dark academia genre I would highly recommend it. I'm just gonna casually skip past Babel because we have like many editions here to talk about for Babel. So I'm moving on to In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This is one I got very, very recently. Lauren from Fiction Tea bought this one for me for my birthday. So I haven't had a chance to get to this one yet. The tagline for this says, six friends, one college reunion, one unsolved murder. It's set 10 years after a graduation. Jessica Miller has planned her triumphant return to Southern elite Duquette University down to the envious whispers that are sure to follow in her wake. Everyone is going to see the girl she wants them to see. Confident, beautiful, indifferent. Not the girl she was when she left campus, back when Heather Shelby's murder fractured everything, including the tight bond linking the six friends she'd been closest with since freshman year. So this follows these six friends reuniting and having to confront what happened on that night. There is somebody still at the school who is determined to trap the real killer. This sounds like a really good blend of dark academia and of thriller writing, which is my favourite kind of story, I think. I really like when Dark Academia still has that atmosphere to it, but it's also pretty fast paced. Again, this is one where I feel like I'm kind of on the fence about it within the Dark Academia genre. However, we're gonna have it. It's on the shelf. I'm counting it and I'm looking forward to reading it. Next up is Naomi Novik's A Deadly Education. Now I have read this one and I have not continued on with this series. I was honestly underwhelmed by this series. I felt like I wanted a lot more from it and didn't get that from it. This follows a main character who is in a school where the only way out is either graduating or dying. There is a lot of monsters in this school and it's a magic school type of thing and they the, the main characters, the students at the school, have to try and use this ability to be able to get out come graduation and be able to escape the monsters that are guarding the exit of this school. It's very repetitive and very isolated and in that sense it does feel like a dark academia atmosphere it definitely has that that trapped dark moody desolate type of feel to it and this follows our main character who has this dark power that is is kind of getting a bit out of control and is quite dangerous so yeah this is again a, a dark academia with fantasy element to it i just didn't love it i felt like it was too isolated for me like there was only three or four different settings we saw within the book and for that reason i just kind of felt like i was bored with it I still have it, I've still kept this copy. I actually think I've kind of hybrided this copy if I remember. This I think is the Illumicrate spray page edition. Maybe, I could be wrong. I feel like that's the Illumicrate edition. And then I've put the standard dust jacket on it, I think, maybe. I remember doing something like that. I don't know, but it's a deadly education. <laughs> Next up is another one I didn't really enjoy all that much. You might be wondering why I'm keeping hold of these books if I didn't love them. And it's because I don't want to fully shut the door on them yet. Like I didn't hate them, I just didn't enjoy them all that much. So this one is The Atlas Six by Olivier Blake. This is obviously one that has done the rounds quite a few times. A lot of people have read this one. There's a lot of hype around this one. This started very strong, it really did. And then it just kind of 
fell apart a little bit for me. I think that it felt very jumpy in the writing style and it didn't really feel like the plot was that well strung together. I enjoyed learning about the characters, however there was also some really shit stereotyping in here that I didn't enjoy. There were two different stereotypes about English people within this book that we don't swear and that we don't talk about sex. So yeah, it was just really, I don't know, it felt lazily written at times and that I found was very off-putting. Obviously just because I felt that doesn't mean everyone else would feel like this. I always feel like people need to make their own minds up about these kind of books and you know this is just my own opinion but I probably should actually tell you what this is about. I can't remember how many students this follows. Does it say? Six. Wait six? Yes six. There's six students who are all some of the world's best magicians. They I think have all just graduated from school and they are offered the opportunity to become part of the secret Alexandrian society which is guarding the library of Alexandria if I remember correctly. See this is I just did the plot did not stay in my head very well. This follows their year of training because at the end of the training out of the six of them only five can continue on to this job that they're all trying to get and it just yeah I don't think I'll be continuing with this story. I like this cover a lot this edition is really pretty. I think is this the fairy loot one? Yes this is the fairy loot one. It's very pretty. I just ah the start felt like a montage and was really fun and I really liked seeing all the different characters and the different abilities they had. I love it when there's different types of magic and people have different abilities within those types. I, I really liked that. I just felt like once they were at this academy thing whatever it's called what was it called society Alexandra society once they were there it just it fell flat for me unfortunately so yes it's still on my dark academia shelf it's definitely dark academia in genre it definitely has good atmosphere like I enjoyed the atmosphere I just didn't think the plot was really there like one minute you were in one location and then the next you were somewhere else without there being any real transition it just kind of suddenly plopped you somewhere and that just felt very jarring so yeah didn't love it but it's it's in the video still. This next one is one that I know a lot of people didn't like but I ended up really liking. This is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. This follows our main character whose niece I think the relative is? Hang on let me check. It's been a while since I read this one. Yes her niece is witness to a tragic crime scene of her best friend being killed. So our main character goes to the university that her niece is studying at to try and be there and support her and then just somehow try and get mixed up in trying to solve the murder. Now the big criticism that I've seen people have is why is this person getting involved in this murder and how is she getting away with being so involved in this murder and to be fair I do agree and I have tabbed this a lot and it's very positive tabbing. I read this for my Patreon book club pick back in 2021 like spring maybe? I, I don't know when it was but it was it was a fun read. I felt like it had a decent thriller element to it and it had a decent dark academia element to it with the setting and the atmosphere. Looking back on it I think the story has a lot of flaws and I can totally see what people mean with the elements where it does just feel a little bit ridiculous. However I did enjoy it and I had a good time and it is I think a fun dark academia. You just kind of have to let down your guard a little bit and accept that it is at times a little bit ridiculous. Next up is another one I didn't really love all that much and I know a lot of people love this so uh, this is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. It was just it was okay. There isn't anything big that made me dislike this book but it just it didn't it didn't woe me. This follows Alex who is studying at Yale and she is tasked with protecting the Yale secret societies except I think there's some kind of murder happening within them if I can remember correctly. See I am awful. I have read this book and I have forgotten the key points of the plot. There is a dead girl on campus and Alex seems to be the only person who won't accept the neat answer the police and campus administration have come up with for her murder because Alex knows the secret societies are far more sinister and extraordinary than anyone ever imagined. They tamper with forbidden magic, they raise the dead and sometimes they prey on the living. So yeah okay this is Alex kind of investigating into what's happening with these secret societies and it's definitely very dark academia, it definitely has that atmosphere to it. It's got the darkness, it's got the moody death stuff going on, it's just I don't know why it fell flat for me this one. I, I don't know if I just found it a little bit too 
boring and repetitive again, similar to whichever other one I said was boring and repetitive, Deadly Education. See, I can't, I'm merging them all together as one. When I think back to this one, the atmosphere is the main thing that stands out as opposed to the plot, which probably gives you a good idea as to how I found this story. I don't know if I'll be continuing on with this one or not. I genuinely don't know. I think it depends on what I think of the, the blurb of the second book. I don't know if the blurb is released or not at the moment. I know the cover has been, so I guess there's probably some kind of description out there. I don't know. But I haven't looked into it yet and I haven't fully decided if I will be continuing on with this series, but it does still hold a place on my Dark Academia shelf. This next one I loved when I read this a few years back. This is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is a story that is set over several years but in a very short book really and I think for that reason it's really fast paced and the atmosphere just sweeps you away with it. It's very isolated but in a way that doesn't have the kind of feeling that a deadly education had in that I felt like it was too repetitive but it still gives you that trapped feeling. It follows our main character who is a student at Catherine House. Now there's like a little introduction on the blurb that is I think a quote from within the book itself it says during your three years at Catherine House you will have no contact with those in the outside world you will not leave the grounds during your time at college no outside music or books permitted if we believe you have wandered from the path of learning you may be sent to the tower each of our students has been selected as someone who belongs here at Catherine you will go to Catherine and Cath you will give to Catherine sorry and Catherine will give to you we will not let each other down this house slash university has this personification to it that almost treats the house as a character in itself and the kind of overriding question within this plot and the the questions our character is asking is not why she chose to come to Catherine House but why the house chose her. As I said this is pretty fast paced from what I remember it's set over the whole time of our main character at these school years. It's very creepy in what is happening and the goings on that you know shouldn't be really happening and the the inquisitive nature of our main character trying to just get answers there and be able to solve what is going on and what this house really is. I don't hear too much about this one online, but it was definitely really, really enjoyable and has stuck in my brain ever since. Next up is a translated book that I'm yet to read, but I'm very excited about. This is The Oxford Brotherhood. This is by Gil Guillermo Martinez and is translated by Alberto Manuel. This is a story about Lewis Carroll's writing and a mystery, murder mystery surrounding said writing. I have tried to summarize this in the past without just reading the blurb and I just think it doesn't do it justice so I am for this one going to read you the blurb. Mathematics student G is trying to resurrect his studies which is proving difficult as he finds himself and not for the first time drawn into investigating a series of mysterious crimes. When Kristen, a researcher hired by the Lewis Carroll Brotherhood, makes a startling new discovery concerning pages torn from Carroll's diary, she hesitates to reveal to her employer a hitherto unknown chapter in his life. Oxford would be rocked to its core if the truth about Lewis Carroll's relationship with Alice Liddell, the real Alice, were brought to light. After Kristen is involved in a life-changing accident and members of the Brotherhood are anonymously sent salacious photographs of Alice, G joins forces with Kristen as they begin to realise that dark powers are at work. More pictures are received and it becomes clear that a murderer is stalking anyone who shows too much interest in Carol's life. G must stretch his mathematical mind to its limits to solve the mystery and understand the cryptic workings of the Brotherhood. Until then, nobody, nor even G, is safe. A thrilling novel from the author of The Oxford Murders inspired by true strange stories from Lewis Carroll's life. The Oxford Brotherhood is sure to make you curiouser and curiouser. I think this sounds really interesting. I have had this one for a little while. I've still got the shiny sheet on it. I got this one in toppings and it had this cover on it and I just can't bring myself to take it off. I don't know why, but I, I would really like to read this one soon. I keep saying this for all of these. Every time I pick them up, there are too many books on my TBR, but I think this one sounds really, really interesting. A little bit different as well. Second to last, I have got Madam by Phoebe Wynne. This is actually on my TBR for this month, so I really hope I can get to this. I, I don't know if I will or not because I have a very chunky TBR. However, I would like to read at least one Dark Academia in September. This is set in Scotland at a school that is 150 years old. We follow a new classics teacher who is a new head of department and she isn't really happy with the, the way that things are being done in this school. The blurb says that Rose is overwhelmed by the Institute, its arcane traditions, unrivaled prestige, and terrifying, cool, vindictive students. She creates her classroom as a safe space for students to be able to come and to be able to learn where stories of fearless women from ancient Greek and Roman history ignite the curiosity of the girls she teaches. However, our main character Rose uncovers a darkness that beats at the heart of this school. The lines between myth and reality grow 
even more blurred. It is up to Rose and the fierce young women she has come to love to find a way to escape the fate the school has in store for them before it's too late. The bottom of this says it's perfect for fans of Margaret Atwood and Madeline Miller. Madam is a darkly feminist tale with an electrifying cast of heroines you won't soon forget. This one sounds like the perfect dark academia, it really sounds like it has all of those boxes ticked. It sounds absolutely fascinating, it sounds very gripping. I really want to get to this one, as I said it is on my TBR for this month, so hopefully that means I can read it in September. I want to try and get all of my Babel editions in shot at once. Is this... I Anyway, the next book, the final book, is Babel by R.F. Quang. I have quite a few editions of this, so I have this one here, which is the Illumicrate, I have the Fairy Loot, and I have the Ark, and then I have the Waterstones. I also kind of accidentally slash not accidentally have another two copies of this book that I need to return. So I went to the Oxford signing event and I did not have my Waterstones edition through yet, but I really wanted to be able to get that personalised. However, they were selling them at Waterstones. So I bought my copy there with the intention of returning the one that I knew was coming in the post. So I have that one to return. And then I also just have a standard non sprayed page edition because this has the black spray pages from Waterstones that I think was the very first one I ordered and clearly forgot to cancel that order. So I really need to sort out the actual editions I have and just get some returns underway because I have quite a few at the moment and it's a bit excessive even though <laughs> it is a fantastic book. This follows Robin and his time at Babel which is the Institute of Translation at Oxford University. It's a completely fascinating novel, I absolutely adored it. This is so strong than the dark academia genre. It is set during Victorian England and it follows a magic system that focuses around silver working and translation. Translation is very much the power play in this book and is what people use to instigate their control and in that there is very interesting conversations to be had within this. It's a fantastic book. It follows Robin's whole time at university and the friends that he meets and the the journey that they go on and how their, their friendship group and their dynamic changes as well. I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. It was so interesting. It was completely captivating. I keep talking about the atmosphere in all of these books, but I think for me that is one of the big things of Dark Academia, is that atmosphere. And having the Oxford setting as well, I did read some of this in Oxford. If you want to check out that reading vlog, I will pop it up here. And it just made the experience even more amazing. So yeah, I, I cannot speak highly enough of this book. I, I don't feel like I've done it enough justice with the explanation, but it's so good. I don't want to say anything that would accidentally spoil it, so I'm not going to give you too much more detail, but I just think it's it's fantastic. It's brilliant and it's the perfect book to round off this video. Okay, that is it for my Dark Academia shelf tour slash recommendations video. I apologise that I was basically reading the blurbs for most of these, but I, I wanted to be able to summarise them without leaving stuff out. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you got some good recommendations. I have a lot of these, as I said, still on my TBR, so I am excited to get to these soon. Maybe I need to do like a Dark Academia style reading vlog or something, let me know if that was something you would like to see. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any Dark Academia recs for me. You can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed, and link down below you will find a link to my online shop and also my Patreon where I do lots of extra content. Thank you so much for watching, keep smiling and stay positive.